This is the new 2023 Range Rover Defender, but not just any Defender. I present to you the new Range Rover Defender 130, or how I like to call it, the Defender Max. When I say Max, it's because this thing is big. Now this is built off of the dedicated D7X Defender platform and it's assembled in Slovakia. Compared to the 110, this has the same footprint in terms of width and wheelbase. However, it is 340 millimeters longer or 13.4 inches. This color is exclusive just to the 130 and it's called Sedona Red. Up front, it's completely identical to the 110. You have that rugged, modernized Defender look, that classic round headlight design. I love the use of the dual colors, kind of splits things up on the bottom, the middle, and of course that Defender lettering going straight across. On the hood, you do have those hood plates. These are just for show, by the way. I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to stand on those. Standard, you get 20 inch wheels with all terrain tires, and it's the back half of the Defender 130 that of course is different. It just has that more stretched look and that rear overhang definitely catches people's eyes. When we tested the 110, I was a huge fan of the styling, front, side, and especially even the rear. I love these square cup style lights that they've incorporated into it. And once again, the use of dual colors here to split things up. This does have the towing package and hey, this is an off-road vehicle. So you do get the fully exposed tow rings if you should need them. Then to open up the back door, you have a large swing out door, just like all the other Defenders. And you know what? This is a very, very useful utility vehicle. Lots of utility here. Even on the inside of the swing out door, you have storage here. You have a safety triangle built right in to that rear door. You have a nice handle right there and it's solid, man. This thing is super, super solid. So underneath the floor, you will find a jack for your full size spare tire that is mounted on the back of that door. And you have decent amount of room here. You can see uh, I have my camera bag and my gimbal here, just giving an idea. And if you want more room, of course, you can fold that third row down. Nice thing about this third row though, it's a very, very useful third row. It's not a very thin foam, it's like a real seat. So uh, you can fold the headrest down just by hitting the button like that. And what I like, it's nice because you can pick and choose which ones that you want to fold down. If you want to fold all of them down, You'll notice that the rear seat on the third row is actually raised up a little bit. It's giving you a little bit of a stadium type of seating. Uh, and because of that, it's raised up there. It's not completely flat and it's going to use up some of your cargo area, not in length, but in height. For more utility, you do have a inverter plug here up to 180 watts. You have a 12 volt uh, outlet as well. And this does come standard with the air suspension. And not only is that gonna be handy for when we drive it, for the ride and for off-roading, but you can actually use it to raise and lower the vehicle if you're trailering. So you can raise it up, help you get it off that ball, or you can line it up and just drop her right down. That's a beautiful thing. Okay, we're inside the Defender 130. Let's see what this baby's got. It's got some pretty get up and go, and that's due to the fact that, first of all, this is a turbocharged three liter six cylinder, and it also has a mild hybrid system. So what's nice is that that hybrid system, it helps it get off the line a little bit quicker, and that will reduce any type of turbo lag that could be associated with turbocharged engines. So total output, 395 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. This will make a run to 100 kilometers an hour, or zero to 62 miles per hour, in just 6.6 .6 seconds. And remember, this is a large eight-passenger vehicle. It's pretty impressive. Now, inside here, it's very familiar in a way and different at the same time because we just gave back we did a basically a back-to-back -back with we had the brand new range rover first edition that's their flagship uh, suv man that thing i had said it in that review if you haven't watched that first of all uh make sure click the link watch that video early in this year right now, but I'm telling you, this is gonna rate right up there as one of my favorite vehicles for 2023 for sure, that, that Range Rover. But 
in here there's some familiar things yet it's just so much more different first of all uh different wise that one was definitely a little more luxurious when this one basically is a lot of utility but really good utility uh lots of storage areas grab handles everywhere remember this is an off-road vehicle you got cubbies you still have a refrigerated compartment in the middle it's nice and tall really good for large drivers you have a full digital instrument cluster uh, behind the steering wheel and you have the 11.4 inch infotainment in the center uh, loved it in the range rover love it in this one as well really quick it's very very fast you get apple carplay android auto it's wireless as well uh lots of good real estate easy to use i like the, the basically the information you get so if you're especially if you're going off-roading there's so much information on this like even uh you can go into wade sensing so if you want to actually wade into some deep water this will do up to 900 millimeters it'll show you what the water level is it'll also let you know uh, what height you are you know so for those underground parking lots you know if you see what the height is you can actually refer here to the height or your dimensions and yeah it's very very handy and some smaller lots this may not fit it depends on how many accessories that you put on this vehicle now the defender has the most accessories available in their entire lineup there is literally something you know everything you can put on here if you want to put a, a, a rooftop tent you can do that you have a 300 kilogram static weight limit on here so that's that should be good for a couple of people and the roof tent for sure plus you can put all the stuff in the back here so getting back to the infotainment this has cameras everywhere which i love and the off-road cameras are fabulous considering you know it gives you that that front look so if you might be going over a crest of a hill and you might want to see what's on the other side really handy to have that but it'll also show you both angles of your front wheels and it has this feature which we saw on uh, the latest lexus products where it superimposes um, all the cameras together and you can basically see underneath the car like it's wild so basically you know it's, it's showing what's what's ahead i guess and then it's using some software trickery and it's pretty cool so that's really handy However, I don't like how they don't use the entire screen. You have basically a quarter of the screen on the bottom for some buttons that could be used for the camera display itself. And you know, maybe call me old and I need something bigger, but you know, you can never get too big of a picture when you're dealing with resolution. So that's just my one little pet peeve. Below that we have our heating controls. This is equipped with quad zone climate control. So the rear passengers also have their own controls for left and right as well. And they have heated seats as well. We have heated and ventilated seats up front. They're all leather and this heat is amazing. It, it I believe, I feel really like it's not just like a, a heated element, it's actually blowing the hot air through the seat. I'm not sure if that's the case, but it's just, it's really, really effective. It's really well done. Some other conveniences, behind your drink holders, you have a wireless charger here for your phone and you open up the middle compartment. Look at that. We got ice cream in here because we actually have a cooler back there. Nice. Now we mentioned this does have the air suspension, so the ride quality is great, but also it allows you to raise and lower the vehicle if you want to go into off-road mode. Uh, it'll raise it quite uh, quite high, actually. You get 12 inches of full clearance. Now the difference between this and the 110 is even though they share the same wheelbase, same platform, this has that longer overhang. So your departure angle is less. Where on the 110 and the 90, uh, it's 40 degrees, this one is 28 and a half. But I don't think that's going to be a huge issue because the people that are buying this 130, you know, I don't think, it's not like you're gonna be going and taking this onto the Rubicon Trail or anything. However, it is extremely capable and whether you're going to, up to the cottage and you have some, some really bad logging roads to tend with or maybe you're, you're living um, out in the country or maybe you're using this for safaris. This would be great, you know, to carry a lot of people because 
that third row is very usable. This is not a tiny little third row like in a lot of vehicles have. Uh, it's totally usable. We actually tried it out with eight people and yeah, would you want to go across the country? Probably not, but who, even if you had a lot of room, who wants to be in the third row way back there for hours and hours? But uh, for, we went out for dinner for, you know, a 20 minute ride each way. Uh, and we had two families, instead of taking two cars, we just took one. It was way easier. Plus there was really, uh, there wasn't a lot of parking. So that was a bonus. Off-road wise, well, of course, this is a Range Rover extremely capable but on the street too it has the intelligent all-wheel drive system it can uh, throw power to either axle and it's it's basically predictive as well uh, but if you do want to go and get a little gnarly with it once again i shouldn't have to go there unfortunately i did not take this off road there's nowhere around here that i can take this off road and uh, i'm just going to have to take all the words of the decades of Land Rover owners that know that this is very, very capable. But anyways, you ride up nice and high, even on the street. This first edition 130 is equipped with a digital rear view mirror. I highly recommend if you don't get the first edition to still get this option, especially with a vehicle like this. You have two rows behind you, both with headrests, and you also have a full size spare tire on that back door. And that kind of blocks your vision a little bit. It's not great vision out there. So flick that on, it's pouring rain right now and it's still really, really clear. So yeah, it's almost a must on the Defender 130. You get 3,000 kilograms or 6,600 pounds of pulling power or towing power for this 130, which is a little bit less than the 110. Once again, another new Land Rover product that I am thoroughly impressed with. As I said in my other review of the Range Rover, I've never you know, been a, a, a big, huge fan uh, of the Range Rovers and this is two for two now. They've really done a great job on both of these vehicles. Um, if I could choose which one to have, of course I'm gonna choose the Range Rover, but that one is essentially twice the price of this. This is gonna run you about $100,000. That one was about $190,000. So you could buy two of these uh, for the price of one. So, you know, it all depends. This one really does scream out adventure for everyone that, that's really active and they wanna get out and explore the outdoors. This is the one for you, especially if you wanna carry, you know, extra people in here, that's not a problem at all. So what are my likes? Well, the size. You know, eight passengers and you can seat them fairly comfortably. That's pretty amazing. Number two, capability. Hey, it's a Range Rover. You've got all the off-road tools at your disposal and you've got all those decades and decades of experience uh, at going off-road. So they've got that down, no problem. Next thing is fuel economy. You know, we're averaging around, you know, it's like 16, 17 liters per 100K in mainly city driving. That's pretty good for a large vehicle like this. And it's not the most aerodynamic vehicle by any means. So uh, compared to the Range Rover that we had, which was a V8 twin turbo, um, this was, this gets actually, this seems like really thrifty compared to that. Utility, lots of utility. I like the size inside. I like the grab bars. I like all the USBs, the 12 volt outlets, the power plugs, um, you know, just lots of utility in this vehicle. Then you get the classic Defender styling. You're either a fan or not. I'm a fan of it. I like how they've modernized it. And the infotainment works great. I like the size of the screen. And this is also equipped with over the air updates. So you can basically get up in the morning if there are updates and it'll just automatically update them for you. And the last like is the price. Yes, it's $100,000, but look out there what else are you going to get for hundred thousand dollars that's going to give you this amount of capability and carry eight passengers and on the dislikes there really aren't very many i mentioned it the camera uh system the cameras are fine it's just when it's displaying it it's wasting all that room down there i'd like to see them use up the whole screen and the last thing of course we mentioned it does have a reduced off-road capability mainly because of the extended length you know what this is going to suit 99.9% .9 
of people's off-road needs for sure. And yeah, I think it's gonna be more than capable of that. What do you think? Leave a comment below. Uh, I like to read all of them. I try to answer any ones that I can. So hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you on the next Everyday Review. Don't forget, like and subscribe. You gotta hit that subscribe button because guess what? We are getting so close. Uh, depends on when you watch this, but we are only 2,000 subscribers away from hitting our 100,000 subscriber milestone. So if you haven't, please do help us out. Cost nothing, helps the channel. See you next time. Ciao.